Great. So next up, we have Alexander Schrat from MSG System, and he will be speaking about docs as code and as the doc primer. Alex will explain the workshop, and I'm just going to remind you that if you have any questions, please go to the Q&A section, and we will read out loud them later. So Alexander, I give you all the power here. <laughs> Thanks. Thanks for the introduction. Um, yeah, my name is Alexander, or just Alex, and I'll be the host for today's workshop. And it's all going to be about ASCII doc, uh, docs as code, and um, let's let's dive right into it. Um, I'll ask you to use the chat to interact here with me. Um, I hear that maybe you heard about ASCII doc before, um, or you have plans with ASCII doc. So now is a good time to go to the chat and maybe paste a, or sh write a short note what you, if you've used ASCII doc before, the plans you might, uh, you have about using ASCII doc in, in your project. So I'm very, very interested to hear that. So please go to the chat and um, just post a short statement here. Let's see who, who wants to share it and I will then read it to the group. And David says, okay, so you have some experience um, with Toxas code in the partner network, okay. Um, and, uh, Chandra, let Lekha writes that uh, they use ASCII doc in their current project. So you have already some experience, that's great. Um, and But today you're going to be writing ASCII doc um, in a small web editor and uh, maybe learn things about ASCII doc that you uh, didn't know before and maybe experience that with a, with a, with a small team. Right. So let's dive into this. Um, these slides and say, well, ASCII doc, why do you, how do you write your docs? Well, sometimes you use an office suite. Um, it's nice to print them or share them by you know, mailing them around, but it's nothing that really works together with source control very good. And wikis are then also very, very difficult to share. Um, they're also difficult to print if that's still needed. And um, while they're good at collaboration, they kind of are difficult to version documentation together with their software that you're writing in the, in the Git repository. So that's probably that's usually problem with wikis. With um, a real continuous integration and continuous delivery setup that works both for text and documentation and for your code, um, you want to have the documentation that you can search, delivered by your continuous integration pipeline. You have, want to have code snippets in your documentation, like using real code that's tested um, by unit tests. Um, you want to document your APIs, um, but you don't want to duplicate them when you write documentation. And ASCII doc can help you doing that. And well, there are two things around in here. Um, that I'm not to be confused, and I always try to be exact here. If I do make mistakes, please point them out to me. So ASCII doc is the language. So like the text that you write in the, in the documentation, that's the, and ASCII doctor is one of the tool chains that you can use to create HTML and PDFs from that. Um, so ASCII doc is all about frictionless writing uh, and using plain text. It has a feature-rich syntax for technical documentation. It's been around for more than 15 years. And in 2020, a uh, standard standardization process started at the Eclipse Foundation. ASCII Doctor is then a tool chain to create HTML and PDF from ASCII doc files. Um, so it's all open source. It run, it's written in, Java, in Ruby, but also runs on Java, Ruby, and JavaScript runtimes and can be integrated in a build, like Maven, for example, or an NPM build, you choose it. And the, there's ASCII doc, you write it in your IDE. Um, so I'm 
also the maintainer, the current maintainer of the IntelliJ ASCII doc plugin. So when you write your content, you're actually not leaving your IDE, you stay focused, you don't switch any apps. Um, and uh, you collaborate with others using version control. That's what developers do. And also for technical writing, um, it helps a lot to version the content that you're writing. And well, this plugin provides also support for Antora. So that's a full site builder for ASCII doc content. And about Antora, there will be a talk later today um, that, all, that I will also present. and where you might pick up some other or deeper insights on how you build a documentation site for your users using ASCII doc and Antora. So there, there's IDE support in Eclipse, in IntelliJ, in Atom, in Visual Studio Code, in Brackets, and many others. And they provide you a live preview that you type on the left, on, on, on the left side, usually in the editor, and on the right, you will have a preview. Um, there are also, if you just want to have a preview, in a, there are plugins for different browsers that help you there, or standalone editors like ASCII DockFX. Um, yeah, and let's dive into what I've um, brought you today. So you will dive into ASCII Doc and learn together with others how to write ASCII Doc. So I brought you some, I would say, cutters or uh, little writing challenges. There's a web editor that will have a scratch list on the left, a source code in the middle, and a preview on the right. So it works just like an IDE, but it works in your browser and you don't have to install anything on your local PC. You can use your local IDE, IDE if you like, but you don't have to. Um, right. So I will show you now live how this editor works. And I will also already post a link here to the chat for a Google Docs document that will provide lots of links and that you will later need um, during the workshop. There's now the link in the chat that will open a Google Docs document that should be read only for you. There's lots of links in there. So I'll show you the editor. So the editor, just, oh, well, this is now the live view here. Let's uh, close this here, give it more, a little bit more space. So I can type in here, hello world, on the left, and it will give me a preview here on the right. And if I start writing something in ASCII doc, make it maybe bold, if this is the formatting for bold, it will show it in bold on the right. And this is a live preview. And the good thing is you can share this URL with others. And all the people who work in this one editor share the same document and can work collaboratively in a group exercise in these. So what I would and yeah, for one of these well cutters, I call them. I presented to you is for, for example, a formatting cutter. Um, so the cutter itself is written in ASCII doc. So here on the left, and it's also between these equal signs, there's, um, you will see, uh, I would say, um, the instructions. You also see links here. And it might look a bit confusing first. Um, but then you then you can sh sh see a pre-rendered content here on the right, and you can click on the link here. So you want, if you want to learn more about text formatting and punctuation, you click on this link, and a new tab will open in your browser and tell you everything about formatting and punctuation um, that you can use to solve this. And down here, and you see another user already entered this. Uh, there's a cursor of another user, and then you can um, type along with that other user to work on this exercise and say, okay, let's do some bold text. Let's make it bold, and this works well, as long as I scroll down here. And you can then, as a team, find out um, how these different things work. Um, 
everybody can have their own kind of space here. Um, right. If you choose not to, well, I, I would recommend to do this in this web editor to collect uh, collaborative with others. And to do that really collaboratively, I would like you to share maybe voice, maybe your camera as well using Zoom breakout rooms. And I then therefore ask you, there's also a link in this Google Docs document for Zoom that you can enter. And um, right. if you then go to this, um, this uh, document here, you will have the Zoom breakout rooms um, when you enter here. But I think I probably misconfigured them that I need to assign you to the different breakout rooms. You can't do that on your own. Um, and then you, when you're in one of these rooms, you open this link, for example, the one for formatting, the one for images, and then start typing and while well, solving the little puzzles I presented there for you. So while everybody is then entering um, Zoom, I would suppose, are there any questions that you want to discuss with me or that you have? Um, you can put them in the chat or we then all meet in Zoom. And for those who want to do the group, want to do the cutters in their local IDEs without collaboration, you can follow the link down here. This will take you to GitHub. And on GitHub, you will find um, all the cutters with the text here. And you will then go to raw view. And then you can copy out this raw view to your IDE. Right. So I will then write into the chat. So leave a note for everybody who will join a bit later. Please click on link and then join Zoom and pick a group exercise. So the group exercises will be, um, as I said, will be about um, formatting text images and diagrams, how to use lists uh, to structure content, how to use source code, how to do structuring with sections, and how to use tables in Rusty Dog. And the idea behind this exercise is, so you learn something today, um, how to do these, but you will also learn how to use the documentation of Rusty Dog. And with that knowledge, you will be an efficient, uh, or you will train your muscle memory in terms of where to find things in the documentation and how to help yourself after today's workshop. Um, I think we will give ourselves time until like 10 past the hour. Um, so that will give you a good 20 minutes to work on one of these assignments that you choose. And then we will all meet again in hop in and for a q a session and i'm happy to answer maybe questions that arise from today or we will look at the the group assign group exercises uh, maybe look at some of the solutions that people are prepared there um, and then later on maybe show how that works in an ide uh, good now let's move all over to Zoom and um, see how that works. So can I help? Um, yeah. Right. OK. Right. You can you can click on the very left here where the user is and change your name if you want to click on this name here. 
and then you and Alma now change their name. And if you mark some text, you will see also the, the person who marked the text or changed something. Right. That now works. It's good. So I hear someone is still having problems. So So, Alex, I'm not sure if you are listening to me, but maybe if you share the audio here in Hoping, everyone could listen because there are new people and, and this will be recorded. <laughs> 